Hello, algorithms and soulmates. I'm Al Reynolds, and this is my new show on YouTube called The Court of Public Opinion, the place where you, the people, will have a voice and will definitely be heard. If you're new to our courtroom, make sure you grab a seat and maybe a pencil and pad, but don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also leave a comment because we love when there is engagement. For all the newbies to the courtroom, don't be alarmed. Think of the court of public opinion as the Nancy Grace meets Rapid Fire meets Fox Souls Face Off. Yes, this courtroom is going to be disruptive. It's going to be messy. It may be rude. There might be over talking one another. We may even spill some good tea that you can use in your own personal life. But remember this, it will always be informative. So buckle up. I'm your host and judge, Al Reynolds, and today I have my legal beagles, attorney Simone Redwine and the criminal defense attorney, Brian Ross. The original trio is back, everybody, tonight, and guess what? The talk is going to be good. Today, A, we're going to talk about why Ashton Kushner's wife allegedly is saying hell no to being subpoenaed in the Diddy sex trafficking case, B, would King Combs be facing rape charges if his daddy paid Rodney Jones the little bit of money that he owed him? C, an ex-employee is suing Kanye West for harassment. Yep, you heard me correctly, harassment. But do we know which type? Is it sexual in any way? And D, it's Final Four season, but contracts and lawsuits don't stop. Reggie Bush is suing for defamation and Angel Reese should she stay or should she go? Okay, so okay, soulmates and algorithms, put some of those emojis in the facts. I mean, in the chat, give me some facts emojis, give me some red wine emojis. And for for attorney Brian Ross, I think he said, What did he want for Brian Ross? A briefcase? What do we decide? Let's put some I got briefcase. one somewhere. <laughs> I got one Let's somewhere. Some handcuffs. We want handcuffs. <laughs> Because Brian yeah, will send you to much. jail. <laughs> I thought Brian was supposed to keep us out of jail. <laughs> Simone, I think you might be muted, sweetheart. All right. So let's let's just jump right in here. So Ashton Kushner, we find out today from credible sources, is that he may be subpoenaed uh, by Diddy to lean in and, and, and give some thought on to what's going on as it relates to Diddy and these sex trafficking allegations. Brian, tell me as a defense attorney and someone who's worked on the federal um, civil level, federally, like what does this mean and why are they subpoenaing people? And didn't we just learn already from what happened when they supported their other friend who was charged with rape? We saw how that went down. So I'm sure this has to have some type of influence on why the wife has said, hell no, we want no part of the Diddy case. The bigger problem for Ashton Kutcher is there was a previous cohort of his who was sentenced to 30 years for the R word. So when there's Danny. rumor, what was the name again, Simone? Tell me. Danny. His name was Danny. So he was the guy from the TV yes. show, that right. 70 show, that they thought might be half black because he had very kinky hair. That guy. <laughs> right. So he was, so Ashton Kutcher wrote letters to the judge saying he's a great guy, all these wonderful things. He never knew that the judge was going to actually read these letters to the jury and or into the public. So he faced a huge amount of backlash because of this. So now we go to round two and they're saying, you may be subpoenaed to support Diddy. He's not going to do that. He's not going to do it because it already ruined his job by doing it before. It won't happen again. A federal okay, subpoena is very strong. Why? Why? Tell me though. Why is this being made public? Are we trying to discredit the the A listers are coming to support or possibly could support? What What is the purpose of leaking this type of information? And why would they? Is this being subpoenaed? Is that coming from Diddy's lawyer or is that coming from the federal government? In all likelihood, that's coming from Rodney Jones' lawyer, and he's doing a great job. I'm sorry to comment either here or there, but he's putting pressure on all of Diddy's friends and sources through all these pictures, all these relationships to compel people to show up. So you can't get out of this subpoena. You'll follow what's called a motion for protective order, but it won't stop you. 
the judge will make you appear and talk about your relationship. Remember, we're talking about a sex assault behavior, human mm -hmm. trafficking. So there's so much that can come into this that you don't want these people. Remember what I told you last week, Al? Too many witnesses. Too right. many witnesses. And that's the problem for Diddy right now. So this is a this is a clever move. If I hear what you're saying correctly, this is a clever move on the side of Rodney Jones's uh, attorney, because even though Ashton Kushner wife is saying, hell no, the government says you have to come. You being subpoenaed. And if you're being subpoenaed, that means you have to speak to the character of this individual, right? Am I hearing that correctly? Everybody, everybody watching Al Reynolds show, remember this. When you get a subpoena, it's not coming from the lawyers. It's not coming from the government. It's coming from the judge. So the ah. judge is telling you to appear and answer questions. You can't get out of that without a good reason. And so, so have, a, yeah. Attorney Redwine, if you were Ashton Kushner and his wife, who saw the backlash for this last letter that the judge read, what would you say? What would you actually say in this? In this, what is it? Deposition, because everything that you say is going to be shared. Exactly. Yeah. This has this has my weave that needs to be taken out itching already. Okay. <laughs> and part of the itching is because we already know that, like, whenever I think of Ashton Kutcher now, I think of in need of a bath, right? Because we know he's talked about how he and his wife don't amazing. believe in bathing, but once a week. That's neither here nor there. My first thought is I'm going to come in there with my lawyer and say hell to the naw. Because the first thing that if you want to object to a subpoena, you can go before the judge and say to the judge, and this would be off the record. You can also ask that there be no cameras involved. You can say, hey, okay. your honor, we are asking to not have to submit to this subpoena or not have to come before the jury because my name is Bennett and I ain't in it. I don't have anything useful to say. Please let me out of it. The judge will then allow both sides to ask you questions under oath. And then based on your answers, if I'm correct, you're the criminal attorney. It's my understanding that based on your answers, the judge can determine whether this this witness is truly going to be uh, useful or whether we can let them slide. Yeah, there's always a way to keep them out. But the truth of the matter is anybody who sat in Kroger's or Publix or Ralph's or whatever your grocery store is and saw uh, a TV guide or whatever that has everyone knows Ashton Kutcher and Diddy were friends. Everyone knows they ran around together. What has come out? What's funny is, and Simone, correct me if I'm wrong, was Ashton Kutcher men mentioned in the original lawsuit? I don't recall his name being. No, I don't think his no. name was in the original lawsuit. No. So I don't I'll know that he was mentioned in this one, but he might have been mentioned in Cassie's lawsuit. I honestly Maybe. can't remember. Wow, I didn't realize. Al, your question was brilliant. Yeah, I don't. Why? Think, I, I think we would have. I think his name would have percolated before this right. if it was mentioned. Right. I think that they are. This is doing. This is fact checking, right? This is this right. is shaking the trees. This is making yes. people nervous because remember, at one point, uh, their relationship was so strong that they were considered the Rat Pack, the new, yes, the new, right? And 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 that the Rat Pack, and they they. They did a lot together. They built a long, over, you know, a decade, you, you know. So I no think party. this was brilliant. I thought that this was a brilliant play. I think this is also Rodney Jones' lawyer putting other celebrities that he have in his arsenal on notice. Absolutely. He's like, listen, well, we're going to start dropping mm -hmm. some names. And we're going to start making a whole lot of people feel uncomfortable. And if you ever did anything in that house... You've got to be sweating bullets right now. Seriously. Absolutely. Now, I am getting very nervous for Rodney Jones's lawyers. The reason is because the way he's shaking these trees, the way he's naming the names, but not necessarily naming those names as defendants, it's really lining this up for what could be a sanctions motion or allegations of extortion. Now, sanctions are really serious. Because what happens with the sanctions most is basically saying you are basically trying to try this case in the court of public opinion, right? Uh -huh. Which we are. And you are making this salacious. You're adding people and you're adding facts in because you're really trying to basically blackmail us and blackmail other people into settling with you in order to not be mentioned. Now, if that is the case, 
Diddy's lawyers can file what's called a, a Rule 9 or Rule 11 motion. They can file a sanctions motion, which is what it is, against uh, the plaintiff's lawyers. And if they win, the plaintiff's attorney will actually have to pay Diddy and Diddy's lawyers cash. Wow, that's crazy. I think there's so much other going on. I think if they try to play that hardball, then they're really going to un unleash the wrath that they have. <laughs> I think this is we're playing softball right now. This is right. Major League Baseball. I think we're playing softball right now. I think they they have only tipped the iceberg in understanding how deep this case could run and how serious it could be. I think they are letting people know right now through this messaging right here. Because remember, there's no articles. This is all he say, she say, who's possibly going to be a subpoena. This is also reporters then going and digging up the relationships and exposing it without there ever being any mentions actually in the physical complaint. To me, this is them saying, hey, guys, get it together because we're going to come. When we come, we're going to come hard. All right. Is there anything else we want to add as it relates to Ashton Kushner and this subpoena? And is there do either of you have any idea who else may be on that list that they may be subpoenaing and why? I don't know, but Cuba Gooding Jr. is running around Miami in a golf cart. That's so true. I'm assuming like, I'm assuming that he's not too concerned, you know. So we'll see what happens with Mr. Gooding Jr. on the next round. Now you know good well that man is probably on the cocaine. Yeah. He don't know what's happening. He don't know allegedly. Allegedly, he don't know what's happening. allegedly, 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 allegedly. allegedly. Yeah, yeah, allegedly. Yeah, yeah, Let's watch that. those terms on my channel, please, because we want to keep the channel up <laughs> so we can right. teach our algorithms. So, you know, that's interesting because he too is another person, Simone, and you can lean into this, who's been able to escape. It, it appears escape or settle out of court. Many allegations right. made by many women about his right. sexual assault behavior. What say you, Attorney Redwine? Um, it sounds like a lot of the accusations that I've read against Cuba Gooding Jr. so far have found a bit uh, somewhat tangential in that I have not read anything where someone has described an act that would have been a coercion of he held me against my will. He did something against my will. It was more so he touched me inappropriately. And so I can see why those accusations may not have led to criminal charges simply because of how difficult it would be to prove that this swiping my bottom or things like that were done intentionally and were done with the intent to assault. So I think he's been able to squeeze by so far because of his celebrity and because the accusations have been vague. But here, um, the things that Rodney Jones are alleging is true. That could be what finally gets him locked up. It's a problem. It's a problem. It's All a right. problem because he pled guilty last April to misdemeanor charge of forcibly touching a woman at a New York City nightclub. Oh, right. So now I didn't know that. Thank and remember, you. everyone watching, remember when you plead guilty, you are admitting that you did it. That's it's right. An admission. So he's told the world, I did this. And the problem is he had to take counseling, he had to take behavior modification. And alcohol treatment, and now, now the tr the picture in the complaint wasn't date stamped. Maybe it was, but if this is after your admission, we now have a problem because mm. if you do go to trial, a jury will be able to hear that you admitted to forcibly touching a woman previously, if the statute allows for that. Hmm. Yeah. Cuba's got mm, a good this point. Is good Great information. Point. This is good information. Welcome back, criminal attorney Brian Ross, with all the good <laughs> lean in today. I had to celebrate you. Easter, okay? <laughs> there was there was Easter bunnies and jelly beans around my house. All right. We, we wish you, attorney Ross. You okay, you two. Let's you let's too. go and let's talk about uh King Combs. You know, <laughs> this was a huge allegation that was brought up today, and this isn't this isn't sexual assault. This is more than just sexual assault. He's facing rape charges. He's facing rape charges. Now, one of you, I remember, talked about this. Maybe it was Attorney Redwine who said, or maybe it was Attorney Williams who said that she smelt this coming on. One of you said that the, the kids are going to have an issue as it related to the rape or sexual assault with girls. And Rico is going to be the downfall 
for uh, for Diddy. And I'm pretty sure that attorney Brian Ross brought that on, that the RICO charges for Diddy. Now, help me understand, attorney Redwine, what and why would someone wait until now in the middle of this case to bring rape charges? Because these rape charges are separate or are they a part of the original complaint? So I don't, uh, they don't- You're on air, attorney uh, Ross. I'm taking notes. I'm writing stuff down. I got a nice <laughs> pen. Long, long pen. I'm taking He's notes. He's a studious I attorney. I just wanted to take yeah. notes. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you, Judd. But what's funny is this is exactly how it goes in the courtroom. Like, you have a judge on a bad day. You know, he didn't eat a Snickers bar. And yeah, he's I like, hate those I hate right. those yeah. So, on brand. <laughs> you know, you know what you here, do? You reset your day. You tell your judge, I'll take a day, you come back. <laughs> exactly. Truly. Sean, take Brian and, Ross off the main stage for why he gets his notes together, please. <laughs> Go ahead, attorney oh, Sean. The, the bailiff is penalizing people. So, right. here, they don't name who the female victim is, right? Because this, mm. is the, this is the petition of Rodney Jones. So, in that petition, he's only supposed to say about what happened to him, although he does include a lot of what he witnessed to help build his credibility. And so my thought and my concern is that because he's describing these various criminal acts, I would not be surprised if uh, the sons, so I named, I said both Christian and Justin, ultimately do become named in part of criminal investigations. Now, you asked the second mm. part. You asked, why now? I want to yeah. be very clear with that. We don't know if it was just now that the person is raising the allegations. But what we do know, it's now that we're hearing about it. Hmm. And I want to clarify, here's what happens. When you make a, a criminal accusation, right, and you say someone touched me inappropriately, you go down to a police station, you make your report. It's up to the DA and it's up to the police system to determine whether, well, the DA determines if, if charges are going to be pressed, but detectives investigate it. So what might be happening is that person made previous uh, allegations, accusations, and had a previous report, but they mm. do not disclose the potential defendant. They don't disclose it until you're much further down the line. So what that means is if they haven't determined their charges will be pressed, and right now it sounds like no court has said we're going to charge him for this. If they haven't determined that, then they're not going to unredact the police report. So what oh. we'll want to know is once he gets charged, then that police report will become available with the victim's name redacted. And we'll want to know when was that filed? OK, got it. Now, this is this whether we it's filed now or was filed previously for me okay. doing this particular, you know, this case, mm -hmm. this couldn't come at a worse time. This couldn't come at, at a worse time. It's basically just feeding into everything that Rodney Jones is asserted in his complaint. It's feeding into what the federal government is looking for. The federal government is raiding their homes where the kids are looking for evidence of not only sex trafficking, but sexual assault of any forms in those homes. Absolutely. A, a, a criminal attorney... Uh, Ross, is am I wrong? Would would you, if you were representing Diddy at this point, want this to come out at this time, while no, he's being not. investigated by the federal government? It just keeps unraveling. And we talked last week about how he threw a birthday party. What was the nightclub in L.A. called? Ph or something like that. Yeah, Penthouse. Yeah, I think it's the yeah. Playhouse. Ph. Uh, yeah, Penthouse. Penthouse or something. I think. Uh -huh. This is what I was. This is what we were saying. Don't throw the birthday party. Don't go underground. I don't right. know if it's coincidental, but the week after he throws a birthday party, he gets indicted. His attorney is saying, stay away. Largely, in my opinion, Al, Diddy has done a pretty good job of staying away. Yes. They caught him with a little camera picture in Miami. He came out to take a smoke break, came back out again with an orange towel, big gold chain, and a hat on. Okay, it's fine. But as his attorney, I would say, call him Monday and say, you did a good job. He did a good job. He stayed away. And that's what he's done, unfortunately. This is what I want to know, though. I want to know how damaging is it the fact that this lawsuit against King Combs is coming forward now in relation to what, you know, because everyone said, everyone in public opinion, and even Misa has leaned into the chat saying that that raid was excessive. 
Is the raid excessive if what is being said happened in that house, happened in that house? That's all I'm asking. Are Good they being excessive? Are they overreacting if things like girls being raped is occurring in that house? And that's why you have the court of public opinion. Some people will say yes. If you ask me as an attorney, a raid is a raid. So they raided his house. They came with boats. They came with big trucks. That's a raid. The houses are humongous. So they raided the house. Unfortunately, right. the timing of King's complaint is very bad. It doesn't help. It gives the government one more thing to bite at. It's very bad for him. Was that a roll of the eyes, uh, Attorney Red Absolutely. Wine? I'm not at Brian, but at the mama who said it was excessive. Let me tell you something, ma'am. This is a consequence of your grown son's choices. That boy is almost 30 years old, okay? And they did not, the police did not beat that boy. They didn't slap him. They didn't punch him. They didn't uh, uh, uppercut him. They handcuffed him. And that's what happens when you choose to surround yourself with people who have previously been charged, I'm sorry, that had previously been accused of sexual offenses and settled for millions of dollars for them. Mm. So perhaps if you don't want your son to be handcuffed in public and those photos be printed on TMZ, you should encourage him to make better choices of who he surrounds himself, even if it's his daddy. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. If, that wasn't a read, if that wasn't a read, I don't know what else. All right, let's go on and talk about it now. Listen, there has been new charges in an ex-employee in Kanye's West uh, camp is uh, suing Kanye West for harassment, for discrimination, for hostile work environment. All right, attorneys, Brian Ross and uh, Redwine, what is this about? Is he suing, is he saying sexual harassment? What type of harassment are we talking about, Red Wine? So we're talking about a hostile work environment that's not sexual harassment. What that can be is a boss who is abusive, a boss who cusses you out, cusses you out, a boss who calls you name, a boss who, when it's time for your shift to be over and you have to go pick your kids up and take them to soccer practice, that boss says, if you leave right now, you're never going to have this job again. You're going to get fired. I won't let you get unemployment and you will have no means of taking care of your child. That's what a hostile mm. work environment. And I firmly believe that this man is bonkers. Kanye West is nuts. And I have just been waiting for Kanye, one of his workers, to raise their hand and say enough is enough. And part of that is because many people don't realize that if you are in a hostile environment, you're entitled to relief. And one of the ways you can do it is, ah, 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 don't you quit? Don't you quit? Instead, you're, you can get what's called stress leave. And you can do that if you find a therapist to say, yes, you tell them your story, you say, and they agree, this was hostile. You can actually get paid to not go to work under the Workers' Compensation Act. Boom. Oh, wow. Get your coins. See, get, get your, your coins. Coin and don't go to work. I, if Kanye is your boss, it got to be stressful. What you know you it's got to be true. It's got to be true. Like, media is already on your side. Attorney uh, Ross, let me ask you this, though. He is alleging a lot of stuff in this in this complaint or in this lawsuit. He's saying that, that, that Kanye, in fact, wanted to shave the kid's head if they mm. were a problem. And he wanted to put them in what would be considered like a prison. In addition, somehow he threw in there orgies i'm like what like kanye's past life and 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 orgies what what does this mean i i just find it so interesting nowadays that people in their lawsuits all these lawsuits are starting to pop up and, and it's and it's going to be hard for people like kanye because we've seen such a sporadic right we've seen such a such an up and down and all around type of behavior that's documented so do we believe this lawsuit? Do we look at it like side eye this lawsuit? Where do we stand as attorneys who take on these type of cases? And how do they decide, hey, I'm going to take this case? 
again. I want it. Call me. Go, <laughs> go, go ahead, Brian. Oh, no, 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 no. Red wine. Let him leave. Call me. I, I would, I, these are the kind of cases I go to law school. <laughs> I dream of it. Like he is. Just, I, I'm just gonna go and just take all of the weird YouTube stuff, the weird Twitter stuff. I've got a folder already. <laughs> Give me a call, Brian. What do you think? <laughs> Everyone who liked that red wine racer arms up, call me. You should put some comment in there on our real show because it was like. The best dose of enthusiasm I've had all day. But she's right. <laughs> As an attorney, a plaintiff's attorney, unfortunately, we love these cases. Mm. We love them because, again, Kanye West. Here is the buzzword of today. Two words. Character evidence. Ah. Character evidence. Character evidence is everything. It can involve your reputation, your opinion and specific acts. So if you are a person who has a history like Kanye, there's a lot of character evidence, isn't there? So, so that's so, are, go ahead. No, that's so interesting because see, for me, not being a lawyer, I'll be like, this seems privileged. This seems, you know, like a hard case. You're going against Kanye. He's got a lot of money, like blah, blah, blah. But you guys are telling me, no, this is the opposite. This is the opposite because of his character references and also let me clarify i want you guys to know true employment lawyers that take these cases on like myself like my colleagues that i partner with the beauty of it is when we see cases like when we see your case we believe in your case we don't charge you hourly no we take these on a contingency fee oh. because i'm good yeah, so you're not, you don't lose anything. You give us a call, we evaluate your case. And once we take your case, the beauty of it is we take the risk with you. If you ever have an employment attorney that's charging you hourly, you gonna lose unless you are the corporation <laughs> itself. And the reason I say that is they have no incentive, right? If you're getting paid hourly, then you have every incentive to draw the sucker out for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. But if you're getting a contingency, your incentive is to get the most money on the table as quick as possible. And again, comp all companies, including the companies that uh, Kanye represents and works for, his charter school, et cetera, they cannot operate without employment law insurance. That's the insurance that kicks in when you sue Kanye for creating that hostile work environment. Therefore, mm. lawyers like me, I don't have to negotiate with his nutty ass. OK, because negotiating <laughs> with his nutty ass will get us nowhere. Got I it. get to negotiate with the insurance company that agrees he's nutty. They just been collecting the premiums and together behind the scenes. We gonna get you them coins. Boo -boo. And so now I'm raising my hand. That's, that's exactly my what hand. you said. That's exactly what you said as it related to Diddy and Cassie. Uh, right. You shared it brought a lot of attention around that, that that Diddy, in fact, did not settle that 30 million dollar with Cassie. But in fact, it was the insurance company of the business that that executed their director's insurance, which paid that. Thank you for that, Attorney Redwine. And see, this is why I said, this is why I said, algorithms and soulmates, this is why I said, make sure you grab a pen and a piece of paper, because I know that we got some algorithms or soulmates that have experienced some type of work, host, ho, I mean, hostile work environment. She just helped you. And don't That's forget right. You can always reach out to her online. All right, everybody, let's rotate into the Final Four season. It's Final Four season. But as you know, we don't care what season it is when it comes to contracts being signed and lawsuits being filed. Now, this is very interesting, and I can't wait to get your lean in on this, Attorney Brian Ross. Reggie Bush has said he's had enough. He said that he's had enough. He said he wants his money for when he was in uh, undergrad, right, and had won the Heisman Trophy. And because they were saying that, quote, he exercised or did something illegal, which now it's not illegal for athletes in college to have what's called an NIL, he said that that, 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 that negative uh, media that he got, that negative attention and all of that being stripped of his Heisman Trophy has caused him millions in his career, and he wants it back. Tell me, Attorney Brian Ross, what exactly is he talking about when he's saying he's suing for defamation? And what is the difference now that college athletes have with this NIL deal that they didn't have back when he was a, a student athlete? 
So the allegation is that Reggie Bush, who played football at the University of Southern California, received benefits when at a time when it was illegal to do so as an athlete. Whether you're on the football team, gymnastics, basketball, swimming, whatever it is, badminton, you had to get college in exchange for sports. However, Reggie Bush somehow wound up allegedly in an $800,000 house with a brand new car, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, ultimately winding up in the NFL. In the end, time changed. We have things called name, image, and likeness deals now. Uh, Angel Reese is making $1.4 million a year in college as a junior to play basketball. Wow. 1.4. That's over a 10-month contract. It's amazing. The so Reggie's saying, wait, wait, wait. Hold up a minute. It's not right that I had to be broke and then I lost my Heisman Trophy. I lost draft picks. I lost a lot of money because the rules were that way then. If the rules were they were then they are now, I'd be fine, and that's the basis of his lawsuit. Okay, so me, does the does the basis of the lawsuit, Attorney Redwine, have a look back clause to it? Is that what he's leaning on, or is he just saying, "Hey, I I shouldn't have been penalized the way I was. I was defamed. I lost millions of dollars. Now athletes can do it. Is that what's allowing him to exercise this defamation now?" don't know i'm not gonna <laughs> lie but that was actually part of my question too because here's the thing about defamation in most states including california defamation has i believe it's either a one or two year statute of limitation from the time that the defamatory statement was made for reggie bush these things happened far before then and right. more than that at the time it happened, that was the rule. It wasn't a law, but it was the rule. So part of the challenge with dealing with defamation is that if, it, if at that point it was true, do we have a case today? And the answer mm. is, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I do think he has valid grounds to get his Heisman back. So it, I believe his true goal is to get his awards back, I get his it. name back in the rafters. And if gotcha. that's what he wants to do, this is the route. Okay. That makes perfect sense to me. So for him, this not, might not necessarily be all about the money. This is about his Correct. credibility. This is about being put back on that, on that, that, that wall, <laughs> you know, exactly. of the greatest, the, of the greatest athletes of all time. You know what? Now that I think about it, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. He was probably one of the best athletes of that of that decade. No, Attorney Ross, that Absolutely. guy, no, that guy was no, like no, you know the LeBron James of of football. He was. He just did. If he, he wasn't, did. Kim Kardashian wouldn't have, wouldn't have hopped up on that. She wouldn't that's have mounted, right. mounted him if he was if he was a scrub. That's not how that, that's not the way. That's, that's not how the Kardashians race. work. <laughs> That that like that. Be getting some good, some good black men. Good men. Some men. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about it. Let's let's break this down a little bit now, because now that athletes are able to do name and likeness deals, we heard now, guys, especially where Deion Saunders is, is coaching the players, you know, on those teams are driving Bentleys to practice. Yeah. Yes, crazy. Absolutely. They're driving. They they're driving be. Range Rovers. Hundred thousand dollar cars. Should be. They. Because. They, because yeah. Because let's put this in context. Prior to that, I had friends. I had lunch the other day with a friend who had a baseball scholarship to a college while playing baseball his sophomore year. Uh, he, he throws out. He uh, tears a ligament in his arm. Or whatever. He can't play anymore. Hmm. Do you think the college gave him? allowed him to play for the rest of the four years or allowed him to stay in school for the four years? No. They snatched his money back. He had no money for school. He was not allowed to play anymore because his body couldn't handle it. So they've always been hmm. employees. They've always been workers. But wow. now they get to be compensated accordingly. And I recently had a client who came to me because um, his, son, his, his son had two offers. He had an offer from one college to play uh, football for 40K a year. All of this is after pay tuition. They paid tuition, room and board, et cetera. He was going to get tuition and all that. One school, 40K, the other 300,000. 
he was livid because the mother of the child said, oh, baby, pick what, whatever your heart says. And the, the little dummy picked the $40,000 school. <laughs> if, you're if you're watching, she didn't mean to call you that. She said, you're very smart. That's not what she meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he picked that school, hated it after a year, and now he's back on the market looking for a different school. But I see it because I just want parents to know this is the kind of money that we're dealing with now. So, you know, continue to invest in your kids. But, yeah, Shador is at the top. Shador is making approximately $10 million a year on his endorsement deals. Jeez, and he's an undergrad? An undergrad. But here's the kicker. Most of the um, – when you, when you sign on with the school, most of the name and likeness deals – are deals that the school gives you because they make the uh, they make most of the brands pay the money to the school and then the school shares oh, it. Shares it. But gotcha. The school is still getting money now. The real deals are if you can get you know in addition you get Revlon and other things where you don't have to split the money with the school. You can do both, um, but it's just excellent that no longer do parent uh, do students have to sit there and struggle where their parents can't even afford to attend the games. When the coaches are making 10 mil. Now you get yeah. to make 10 yeah, million I like too, that. baby. So let's go to Angel Reese because I find her very fascinating. It's a yes. it's it's fine. It's it's so refreshing to see women's sports, black women get their due. So to me, I, I just love everything about and around her. Now the question here though is, you know, and like I said, should she stay or should she go to the pros? Should she stay? Is she gonna make 1.3 million dollars. She's got one more year of eligibility. She's a junior. She's got one more year, and maybe next year more deals will come, more NIL deals will come in. Should she stay and make that 1.3 million and more? Or should she turn it all in and go to the WNBA? What say you, attorney Red Wine? Oh, sorry, baby girl. You have no choice. You have to stay. You're going to stay at this school. Wow. Baby, you're going to use all five years. If you decide you want to be a doctor, you just sit up there and you take all the classes. Here's why. If she goes to the WNBA, she will receive $78,000. If she stays in college, she's going to get about $1.7 million. There is no discussion. This is ridiculous. Baby girl, you know what to do. Go ahead and learn something tomorrow. Mm, okay. I'm raising, hand, I'm raising my hand. I'm raising okay, my hand. attorney Ross, what you got to say? I, I, I agree with 99.9% .9 of what this brilliant woman has said last week. 99.9. .9. To the contrary, Al, I agree with 100% of what you said. All right, you'll keep your seat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say this. Why hasn't she been in a State Farm commercial yet? Slow it down. Jake, who's the brother, the good-looking brother with the hair? Yeah, he's right. Paul? Paul Pierce? But he's the guy, the actual guy who pops in with the red shirt. Yeah. Right? What about him? Yeah. He's, oh, he's, he's a new Jake. He's the new Jake. Yeah. Jake. Yeah. Okay. What Chris about him? Paul, Steph Curry, Aaron Rodgers, Kaylin Clark. Why hasn't she been? In she's coming. Movie? It's coming. I really think it's because she's prettier than Kaylin Clark. So I think she's. No, no, without, ain't no doubt about that. No doubt about that. No They're doubt. giving her pretty deals. They're giving her other things. But because let, let's be honest, uh, Revlon and those beauty brands, they have a larger budget for marketing necessarily than some of the brands. Like So all of that is in due time. Um, yes. But I think those can come too. But I think you're making a great point, which is there's, there's so many more deals that she can get. But yeah, I if... also think. Mm -hmm. No, go no, ahead, go Al. ahead. No, go ahead. But I think a portion of her tears were the fact that she's got to make this call, right? They lost by three. Uh, yeah. So Angel Reese's team, LSU, lost by three points yesterday to Iowa, which Caitlin is on. And in that, that means she's got to make the decision. Is this going to be my last year? Am I going to leave and either go to WNBA or even Europe? Or am I going to stay longer? She would probably be one of the first in the few to stay longer, but now we know why, because it is lucrative finally lucrative. to get an education. Yeah, yeah. it's so funny because when I was coming through, if you were talented like that, you would give up those extra years to go to the pros because you were able to help your family. And Correct. that was made, that was the main goal. 
of, right. of deciding whether I should stay in college or go pro was you wanted to go pro so that you could start to bring that money in. I thought also you guys talked about beauty brands. Everyone's talking about this young man that plays for Duke that paints his nails blue. Only to find out he has one of the largest NIL deals with Hanson for nail polish. For nail polish. Right. Call me whatever you want to call me. When I drive up on my Bentley, <laughs> when I drive up in my Bentley, call me names then too. Jer when I'm Jeremy in the Morton Steakhouse, call me names then too. <laughs> Boy, don't let them talk you into taking that nail polish off your hands. You better leave that nail polish on your fingers. I promise you. And I know your mama will co-sign that one. <laughs> she, she's going to have nail polish for life. Mama's going to be fat, literally. <laughs> Dude, if somebody paid me, I would paint mine and my toes today. Let's be I might, very clear. Yeah, I agree. I didn't agree. <laughs> Let's be very clear. All right, guys. <laughs> That's going to bring a closer to our, our uh, court of public opinion. What a great night with the original tri trio here. And before we end the night, let's go to our algorithms and to our soulmates. Like I said, in the court of public opinion, we want you to be a part of this process. We want to be a voice for you as well. So if you have any questions, let's drop them in the chat. In the meantime, while those are coming up with the questions that have a question, let's see some of those em fax emojis. If you enjoyed the show, let's see some red wine emojis for attorney red wine if you enjoyed the show. And let's see a couple of briefcases in the chat for attorney Brian Ross. All right. Do we have any questions? We're going to take a second or two to see if there are any questions. All right. Court of public opinion, court of public opinion a thing. Very catchy and a nice niche will catch quick simone okay that's not a question bailiff what's going on sir all right here we go uh 901 cash g said do you all think the courts will force simon out of the country absolutely yes federal um uh, especially we're in an election year so whether it's the current president stays in, in office or we have a new president, well, especially if we have a new president, uh, um, they do not like it when there are public cases that take advantage of the immigration state uh, uh, system. So I think they're going to make an example out of him and he's going to be gone, I'd say, within the year. Mm -hmm. All right. Dimes 308. Does the corruption in entertainment devalue how much entertainers earn? Good question. Mm. Attorney Ross, what you think? I think so. I mean, there's a side to rap, right? Where people can get arrested if for some odd reason their album deals, deals better. But overall, people have to take a hit if they have some sort of damage to their image. I think so. Yeah, All right. I, I, think it's, I think it's Ariel. Ariel said, do you think Trump really has a good chance of winning or no? Hey, all you got to do is look at the polls on that one. He has a very strong chance of winning, and it's very scary to watch. What do you think, Attorney Redwine? I think that, um, by and large, uh, Americans are very stupid, so I think there is a strong chance he will win. Sorry. Okay. Mm. All right. Make It Make Sense says, why delivery drivers need to carry guns and postal workers don't? Can I, take this uh, one? Can I take this driver. one? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Please, I'm not the, go, I'm Brian. Not, I, know, I think I know what you're going to say. Okay, I was a kid from like four generations <laughs> supposed to work or so. I'm next. <laughs> because in the end, mailmen are less likely to get robbed. They no, they get robbed a lot. They get they robbed do, a lot. Actually, they get assaulted really? and robbed a lot. I would think that, that mailmen, aren't they government employees? Yeah. Yeah. So you can't expose the government in that fashion, whereas delivery guys, that's a wow. private company. So the liability is less on the side of a delivery company that's private than the government, which is a whole nother bag. So we don't want to give them guns. <laughs> I like that logic. And as someone who's five generations of postal workers, I also part of my logic was that most a lot of postal workers, not most, but there are a lot of them that are nuts and they just figured since they already go postal on one another, let's not give them a gun to just, yeah. you know, take us all out. My guess. Yeah. 
All right. Angel Eyes 33 said, is court of public opinion a thing you all are trying to make big? Yes. I'm going to start with that over here. Yes. If you guys ever worked with Simone or Brian, their excellence level is so high that they don't associate with anything that's not big. And I had to do a whole lot of arm twisting to get these two to join me on this platform. Yes, we are. I feel like that the whole reason that I created this platform is not only to entertain and educate, but also to uplift our community to help us understand the law better. If we understand the law better and we understand our rights as it relates to the legal system, it gives us more power to be better as citizens. So the court of public opinion is adding our views, our feelings, our voices to a stage and a larger stage where most of the time we are silent. And now there are people like Simone Redwine, people like Brian Ross, who carries JDs, jurists of doctorates that are being heard at the highest levels in courtrooms. And I have them here giving you advice so that you can be heard out here in your court of public opinion. All right. All right. Any other questions? All right. KM said, if either one of you were representing Portia with her divorce, what would you suggest for her to focus on at this present time? <laughs> Ladies first, Miss Redwine. <laughs> I think for her to focus on preserving her money, immediately take all, if there's any joint accounts, take all of the money out. Not just her money, take all of the money, pull it to the side, because I believe he has incurred debts that she is likely going to uh, has the potential to be uh, exposed to and be responsible for. So save all your money because he ain't got now. Mm. <laughs> I do like this next question from Miss <laughs> Nana Mac. Miss Nana Mac said, "Do you think politicians will take advantage of all the Hollywood sex scandals this election year and make legislation to crack down on Hollywood mobs or gangs?" Good question. <clears throat> I, I I was right. thinking about I was thinking about this today actually, like what can they do given the Harvey Weinstein's and the Jeffrey Epstein's to try to stop it? You have to do something. You can't just sit there and let attorneys like myself and Miss Redwine close it down from a profit standpoint. Quite honestly, like we have to actually go in and penalize people who are convicted of these yeah. things. And that's what I think. I think it's a great question. I think it should mm. Okay, Erica, we hear you loud and clear. She said USPS is private but government protected. I think I do remember that somewhere it did go from, from government to private. So good point, but it is still government protected, which means it's government liability attached to it. So my comment remains the same. All right, everybody, that is going to bring conclusion to our show tonight in the court of public opinion. Uh, be sure to hit that like button if you haven't already. If you're new to the court of public opinion and in our courtrooms, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And also please in the replay, be sure to get in that comment section. We love the engagement. Be sure to leave us any questions. And until we see you again, I think we're back on tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Everybody have a great night, and thank you for joining me on my platform. Bye. Good night.